Hi everyone, this is Lee here. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over definite integrals and a couple of example problems to help us along the way. All right, let's begin. So before we get to definite integrals, let's do a quick recap on uh, indefinite integrals. Now, if you remember uh, from the previous video, if we were to be given a function, um, and this function looks something like this, right? What the uh, indefinite integral will tell us uh, the entire area under the curve uh, for this function as it approaches infinity. But we don't want to do that a lot of the times in physics. You know, a lot of the times in physics, uh, we want to know for like very certain things. For example, if we are given, let's say, a velocity time graph, so this is a velocity time graph, okay? Um, and I only want to know, right, the integral between two certain points. That's what definite integrals tell us. Now, before we go into that, it's important to know for us in physics uh, what the integral actually gives us. Now, if you remember uh, from the previous video, we know that integrals are a way of finding area under the curve, and uh, area is just a way of multiplying. Okay, so if we were to multiply velocity times time, the question is, what will we get? So if we multiply velocity times time, we will get displacement. So simply put, the integral of a uh, velocity time graph would give us the displacement. So the area under the curve would give us the displacement. So if this graph shows us the changing velocity along a period of time, and we want to know, you know, what was the displacement of let's, whatever this object is from time one to time two? Okay, we would say, all right, let's say time one, uh, t one, let's just say it's like two seconds, and time two, let's say it's 20 seconds. All right, so what we're finding, so let's say this is time one here, and let's say over here is time two, not to scale, of course, right? This is time two. So finding the integral would give us the area under the curve for this region, okay? We, we have created these bounds. We only care about the area under the curve uh, between these two time points, and what that tells us would be the displacement, okay, for this object, right? How far does this object actually travel given this velocity time graph? So that's why it gives us a definite integral. Okay. So now that you know the definition of the definite integral, let's go over how to uh, integrate and also how to integrate with definite integrals. Let's begin. All right, so in this integral here, we have the integral of this function x squared plus dx. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a number one in front of this dx as a reminder that there's a one there. So let's go over, uh, so a quick little recap of the rules that we need to follow. So first off, what we need to do is we need to add one to the exponent, okay? And the reverse of the, the power rule, after we add one to the exponent, we have to divide by the exponent, okay? So what we're doing is we're trying to integrate this entire uh, function here, and if we take a look, we got to make sure, okay, is, is everything good to go? And the answer would be yes, because uh, the, the variable that we're integrating dx is within here. So if we take a look, uh, if we add 1 to this exponent, okay, so what I'm going to do is my, my additional 1 I'm going to do down here in red. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, Okay, and two plus one, and I'm gonna divide uh, by that exponent. So two plus one is three, so I'm gonna divide this by three. Okay, so over here, um, there is no um, variable, but if you remember, whenever we have just something like the x, um, that just ends up being the uh, variable itself. And so this becomes just x. So in, in the next line, I'm gonna clean this up. Now, this is something that I like to do. Even though this is all over three, I like to actually have it uh, by itself, right? I like to make sure that I know that this is being multiplied by a third, right? So one third times x, two plus one is to the third, plus uh, the integral of just dx would just be x, okay? And that'll be it. That will be our integral. Now, if we wanted to do this for a, uh, a definite integral, we have to first say, all right, well, 
what do we want to integrate from? So I'm going to take the same exact problem, but I'm going to give us some bounds. Let's say we're going from 0 to 2. Now, as a reminder, what this tells us is if we're given a function, okay, those bounds, the, the 0 and the 2 that I just wrote, is telling us the, the first or the far left bound. So in this case, in my example here, that was T1, and my far right bound, which is right in this case, it will be T2. So this 0 and 2, these are the bounds. This zero at the bottom is my leftward bound, and this two is my rightward bound, okay? My initial and my final. So I should write that there, because that's very important. This upper bound is your final bound, and this right here is your initial bound, All right? So in this problem, our bounds are from zero to two. Um, in this uh, first part of the video, our initial bound was 2, and our final bound was 20. So if I were to write an interval for this, it would look something like this. Our initial was 2, our final was 20. Okay, those are our bounds. All right, um, and the interval will be the same, x squared plus dx. All right, um, now I'm going to skip the steps here to get to the integral. Um, because you know we already know how to do it. Uh, but basically, what we would end up with is one third x cubed plus x. Now, what you want to do here, and this is all within the bounds of zero to two. Okay. So what this tells us is we need to know the area under the curve from zero to two. So we have to actually plug that in. And so we would plug in uh, the final bound first, and then we would subtract that from the initial bound. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. So we will get one third, we're gonna do the twos first. So two cubed plus two, I'm gonna parentheses that, so I don't wanna mess with it, all minus, parentheses, one third, zero cubed plus zero. Now, the reason why we do it in this order final minus initial, if you remember, uh, final minus initial is always going to be the form for delta, right? Which is going to be um, the final minus initial form. And so if we uh, do all this, 2 cubed gives us 8, 8 thirds plus 2, uh, minus 0 cubed, which is just 0 times 1 third, which is just 0 plus 0, and so that's all just 0, right? So it gives us 8 thirds plus, zero, plus 2 plus 0, uh, and this gives us, what, that's a 6 thirds, so this gives us um, 8 thirds plus 6 thirds, which gives us 14 thirds as our final answer, and um, for us in physics, we will put that in as a, a decimal, whatever that might be. All right, so that's how you do um, our first little interval, our definite interval. Now, I wanna go into graphically what these bounds actually mean, okay? So if I were to take a look at this whole area under the curve thing, uh, let's, do, let's do a new little function there, okay? What these bounds tell us is when we have, let's say, um, let's do final minus initial. Okay. So when after we find the function and we plug in this f, right? We plug in that value, what we are finding is so if this is f right here, we're finding the entire area under the curve from that f point all the way to whatever the start of the function is. Okay? We're finding all of that, all of that. And for here, this initial, I'll write that in as, as a I instead of an O, so that it doesn't confuse us. And so what that tells us is, uh, let's say we have this point right here, right? So this is our initial. So what that initial tells us is it, it finds the area under the curve from that initial point all the way back to the start, right? So it tells us all of this. Okay, so when we subtract the two, what we're doing is we're subtracting the big, big area under the curve, which is the final, from the leftward bound area under the curve, which is the initial. So what we end up with is this highlighted portion right here. So if we subtract that big part from the small part, what we're, what we're uh, left with is the remainder, okay? And that's all we care about. 
right? We only care about that chunk um, according to our bounds. And so this part right here, okay, this is all subtracted away, okay? And that's important because we don't care about that part. We only care about this part right there, which is not subtracted away. And that's what we find in our integral. Okay, so now we have that out of the way. Let's do a couple more practice problems. All right, so the first one, we have a integral from our lower bound of negative three to one, and our function is six x squared minus five x plus two dx. All right, so let's take the integral of this. Now, once again, I'm gonna to try to go through this uh, step by step um, at first. So I'm gonna do that with red. All right, now to integrate, our first thing that we do is we add the exponent. So two plus one, that gives us three. So we divide all that by three. Here, uh, we have a one there. So here we have one plus one, right? Because there's technically an x to the one there, and then we're gonna divide that by two. And here, we don't have, um, we don't have a variable, so that just leaves us with uh, x. Remember, if we don't have anything or any variable in front of the, the dx or the d whatever, uh, that just gives us with the, the x value. And so uh, what we would get is 6x to the third divided by 3 minus 5x squared divided by 2 plus 2x. And remember, at the end, we will take the bounds from one to negative three, because that's where we're um, integrating from. And so our next step, what we have to do, is we have to actually plug in those values. And remember, it's always gonna be uh, final minus initial, okay? And before we do that, I do wanna clean this up. Six divided by three, that just gives us, that just gives us two, right? So that's just two x cubed. All right, so if I plug in the one, we get two, times one to the third, all divided by three. Oh, excuse me, we got rid of that three. So two times one to the third uh, minus, so we have five halves uh, x squared, so that's just one squared, plus two times one, okay? And all of that minus, uh, we have two x to the third is just x to, oops, made a little boo-boo there, uh, negative three to the third, okay? Minus five halves, negative three squared, plus two times negative three. All right, let's clean this up. Uh, one to the third is just one times two, which is just two. One squared is just one times five halves is negative five halves plus two times one just gives us two, right? Uh, all of that minus, uh, boy, negative three cubed, that's negative 27 times two, which is negative 54. All right, negative three times two is just nine. Nine times five is 45. 45 divided by two, so that's negative 45 divided by two. Um, negative three times two just gives us simply negative six, okay? And if we plug all of that into our calculator, doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -doo, we should get 84. Don't believe me, you should try it out yourselves. All right, so that's how you do what? Let's try another. All right, now what if we have, what if we have something as beautiful as this? Let's say we go from our bounds, our zero, four, and then we get, wow, 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 wow. The square root of t, t minus two, and dt. Now, don't let that square root uh, scare you off because that is, that's not scary at all. Um, the first thing that you should do if you're given something like this um, is to just clean it up a tiny little bit, all right? So my next line, this is my cleanup. So this uh, square root of t is just simply t to the one half, right? Um, and then that is being multiplied by t minus two dt, right? I'm still cleaning things up. Now, I don't like these two separate, so I'm gonna combine them. So we have 
0, 4, t to the 1 half times t. Um, this t has technically a 1 there, so 1 half plus 1 gives us 1 and a half, aka 3 halves, right? Uh, minus 2t to the 1 half, and all of that by our good friend dt. Okay, so technically all of this is by dt. All right, now we can integrate. So remember the rules. Uh, I'm going to do the little adjustments in my, my red pen. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to add 1. Okay, so 1 plus 3 halves. So I'm going to do plus uh, 2 divided by 2. Okay, because that's our 1. So that gives us 5 halves. So t to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves. All right, here. 1 half plus 1, uh, so technically that's 2 divided by 2, which gives us 3 halves. And so all of this is divided by 3 halves. All right. So the, the next step, uh, we can clean things up a little bit. Uh, so here we have, I'm going to do this step by step. We have 5 halves all divided by t to the 5 halves all divided by 5 halves minus 2 t to 1 plus 2 gives us 3 halves, all divided by 3 halves, right? And then here we have our bounds of 4 and 0. Okay, but I don't like this. I want to clean this up a little bit. Um, if we have a fraction in the denominator, all we can do is just flip it upside down. So we get 2 fifths t to the 5 halves minus 2 thirds times 2 t to the 3 halves from 0 to 4. And you know what? We can clean this up even more. Um, instead of just rewriting, I'm just going to, eh, I'll rewrite it. 2 fifths t 5 halves minus 4 thirds t to the 3 halves all by their bounds, 0 to 4. All right. Ooh. Now we can actually plug things in. Um, this zero makes things very nice to us. Uh, zero to any power just gives us zero. So the first is just all zero minus. So here we have two fifths. Then we have four to the five halves um, minus four thirds, four all to the three halves. Okay, And we uh, use our our calculator, we use our brains, and we get negative 32 fifteenths as a final answer. Believe me or not, that's what we get. Prove it to yourselves. All right, so that's how we integrate um, by doing definite integrals. The best way to approach this is through a lot of practice. But the important thing to remember is that integrals are the opposite of derivatives. Derivatives tells us the slope for a function at a certain point. Uh, integrals tells us the area under the curve and definite integrals tells us the area under the curve that we set by certain bounds, okay? And uh, unlike in calculus, we can say for physics that these actually gives us something. It tells us something physical about our world. And throughout our class, we will work towards getting a deeper understanding of that. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.